to another episode of the OG Wisdom Podcast with me, your brother Tad. And we got the legendary, extraordinary DJ, one of the heavy hitters, the heaviest heavy hitter, DJ Enough. What's the word, bro? Yo, Zab, I lost a little bit of weight. Hold on, son. <laughs> <laughs> said the heaviest, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, maybe with the in work power you put and ranking. Yeah, that's what you talking about. But the way I lost some, right? Yeah, you looking good, brother. Thank you, brother. What made you want to lose weight? I had to. Either that or die. Yeah, especially at our age, right? One hundred percent. Health is important. Health is wealth. Health is the most important thing at this point. Beyond the money, right? One hundred percent beyond the money. How long you been in the game? 20, 25, 30 years. Over 30. Over 30 years putting it down. Alone, I've been on Hot 97 for 25 years. Wow. Alone. 25 years alone. So you've seen the people come and go. You was one of Biggie's first DJs, went on the road with him. What was that experience like? Being with Big and them, that, honestly, between Big and the Mafia, changed my life. You know, like to this day, to this day, everyone still wants to know that question. How was it being with B.I.G.? To this day, there's nothing more powerful or nothing more I'm connected to that the world still asking them questions 25 plus years later. Yeah, I mean, he was one of the, arguably one of the greatest to ever do it. 100%. When you first got on with Big, did you realize the magnitude of what he was going to be back then? No. Nah. You didn't realize? We, we, we knew he was special, but to hit the magnitude and the success that he's hitting, and to be honest with you, only on, what, two albums? And I say two albums in the sense of like, he was literally alive to record only two albums. We only got to perform one album. That's the crazy part, people don't realize that. We never performed Life After Death, only performed Ready to Die, that's it. Right, so back then, Back then with the height of the East Coast, West Coast beef, now we all understand it was all a big misunderstanding. In hip hop, what are some of the things you think you can do as an OG to quell some of the violence? Because I mean, you done survived the Big E's, the Tupac's, the Nipsey Hustles, the Pop Smokes, every generation, you've been here through it all. For the most part, to me, it's all about communication. Just make sure you communicate with the right people. Remember I said, the right people. You be communicating, but you be communicating with the wrong people. And you don't want the wrong people to get the message. Especially if you're not trying to convey that. Not everybody's family. Remember that, that word. Not everybody's family. So to the new artists that got a 30, 40, 50 deep entourage, it's, it's like, what, what, what advice would you have for them? Because, like you said, all of them are not family. And out of that 30, 40, only four, Five, if you're lucky, is really ready to ride with you and do what's necessary when you ain't riding high at the moment. That's it. What would you say to the... To Tap the into the ones that look out for you when you ain't doing your best. Those are the ones who might be the ones who's going to ride with you until the wheels fall off, in good shape or bad. So the up-and-coming DJs that want to get into the game, since the game has changed, what advice would you give them now? Don't do it. Do something else. Mess you up with that one, huh? <laughs> oh man. So enough. I know you got to get ready to go tear it down. I'm going to do my thing for BK all day. You know that? Yo, we appreciate you, man. Thanks, all man. that you've done, Thanks, putting man. on for the city and everything.